hair. I have to I have to wash my hair tonight. So I don't wash my hair every day, obviously, because like I just don't want it. You don't have to wash your hair every day, but it, it kind of ruins it if you do. And I have pretty dry scalp, so I don't my hair doesn't get oily very easy. So like if I look horrendous, it's because I just did not put any makeup on because I wanted to be like truthful and real and all that good stuff with you guys. So now that we're done talking about that, let's get into the video. All right, so I do have my list of questions. I wrote them all down on a piece of paper because I had some on Instagram and some on Twitter and then some here on YouTube. And I just wanted to kind of like put them together and not have them like all over the place. But I do want to show you guys this. I got this passion planner. I actually like Googled planners and this came up on YouTube and it is so freaking awesome. So I did want to put that out there. I think this is like 20 bucks, but it's a dated one and it has times in it. And it like helps you with your goals and like mm. <laughs> and like your game changers and your passion roadmap and it just wound up being like really super freaking awesome and it's got the whole year here and I'll kind of show you like the one week that I did so this is next week's like it's kind of like washed out but I color coordinate it you can put your space of infinite possibilities your to-do list it's timed you know, good things that happened this week. And it's just, I think it's really all around a good thing. And I wanted to show it to you guys. And this is like monthly reflection page on each one. I wanted to show it to you guys just because like I paid for this. I didn't get it for free or anything like that. But I just wanted to show it because I really think that being organized and like writing down your passion or writing down your goals is really super important because I feel like when you can see them, they, they seem more obtainable, if that makes sense. All right, so the first one I got, and I'm not gonna like list the names, I'm just gonna put them, I just wrote them down, sorry guys. So the first question that I got was, how are you growing your channel? So basically she was asking like, do I go to other people's channels and like do sub for sub? No. <laughs> um, I only say that because I don't, I think that it's it's too much. First of all, there's way too many people on YouTube for people to be sub for subbing, and then it's like you didn't really care about their video. Does that make sense? So I will tell you that a lot of the times I will go onto the YouTube world life and um, I will watch videos simply because I am interested in them. Like I, I am subscribed to these people. I like their content. And I more or less relate to what they're saying. So if I have a question about whatever they're talking about or if they have a question and I'm like, heck yeah, I want to answer. So I kind of do that a lot. Um, and sometimes I'll get likes or whatever or like if they're reviewing a palette or a product and I thought differently of it, I'll kind of drop in there like, you know, I think your review is really awesome. But when I did my review, I really didn't feel the same about the product and kind of just like throw it in there without throwing it in there. I have tried like different Facebook groups and like follow things and like I'll go to post something and like I'll get spammed with just like screenshots screenshots follow me subscribe screenshots blah, 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 blah. and I just get it's too overwhelming for me so I kind of cut doing that I was just recently added into a beauty channel YouTube support group um, with I think it's like 15 or 20 other women um, I think that's really nice to be like that small. I think if it gets way too crazy, I'm out. I've tried way too many of the sub for sub things and the bottom line is no, I do not do that. Um, my channel is growing much slower than some people that do that. But at the end of the day, I want people who are coming here because they want to see me. I want people engaging. The problem is when you do all those kinds of groups and stuff like that you run into people that don't care what you're putting out there you're not building a community basically you're just networking but not succeeding if that makes sense so like these people are forced to watch your stuff instead of wanting to watch your stuff um however i have gone down that route and i just i don't like it um so i would guess like i kind of just get them organically i guess um giveaways and stuff like that bring people in um you guys sharing and telling people but really nothing special. I wish I had like a secret thing so I could like grow my channel and be super freaking awesome. So the next one was, how did you start YouTube? Oh boy. Okay, so in 2014, 2015, 
2015, I started YouTube originally and I was recording on my small little iPhone, like it was back before these humongous iPhones, on my small little iPhone and I'm pretty sure the first video I did, I recorded it up and down like this and like, um, like front facing. So everything was backwards. It, the video was like just here because I had it up and down and it was really a hot mess. Um, but it was, it was about 2015. I want to say 2015 I really started um, and I just kind of fell off because I I feel like I didn't have enough stuff like I didn't have the lighting and I didn't have all like the makeup I do now like literally within those four years my makeup has grown significantly and I have hidden all those videos so you guys cannot see them because <laughs> they were horrendous and maybe I'll like react to an old one later but um, my makeup has grown I just feel like I didn't have enough you know what I mean like I wasn't enough um, to be like keeping up with like Katie and all those other Jaclyn Hill and all them other people that were just soaring. But honestly, I wish I had stayed and just stuck it out because right now I would probably have a much larger account and just, I, I, you know, I folded, I folded under pressure. I didn't think I was enough. And like, that was kind of like a me problem and not really an everybody else problem because I had just recently started this past December in 2018 on an iPhone and now here I am with a phone uh, with a camera with all the lights and so much makeup that I, I am just so lucky to have where a lot of like smaller influencers like you guys some of you guys I know are influencers too really don't have the money to have where I have a ton of it and when I say a ton I've categorized and priced it all like it is a lot of money um but that is like, that still doesn't make me feel like that's why I started now. Like, I feel like it's my passion. Like, it's what I want to do. And even if I don't grow a super huge community, it's not the point. Like, I come here and it's just relaxing. It's fun. All of the good stuff and positive vibes. And I just, I don't want to get back to like where I was in 2015 where I was like, you know what? I'm just giving up on my channel. I'm just giving up on my dreams. It's pointless. I've started too late. There's too many people better than me. But I'm trying to get myself out of that where I'm like, you know what? No, like you're good. You're good at what you do. Keep going. Yeah, you might not have millions of subscribers, but that's not why I started YouTube. I started it because I love makeup, skincare, beauty stuff. Like I just, I've loved it since I was little and it, this gives me an outlet to express that. Um, and so that's why I started and when I started. I have a lot of love and support, my friends and my family and you guys always are so super freaking positive. So you really pump me up to know that like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Like you guys come back and you come back and you come back and you comment and you watch and that's what I want. I don't need a million random people to come watch my videos. I need people who want to see me and want to just connect with me and make a little family and that's all. So let's move on to the next one now that we're done all that. This is actually a little harder than I thought it was gonna be. It's, it's kind of like, um, I don't know, like uh, exposure. Like I feel exposed, does that make sense? I'm not really, and I'll give you a truthful thing, okay? So throughout the video, I'll do fun fact. Fun fact about me, because I want it to kind of be like a, about me. Um, I'm not really a good emotional person. So like when I start to talk and get in my feelings, I'm like, oh God snap snap what are you doing um like I just I'm not if I cry I try to hide it like I'm just not real good at expressing my emotions if you have like that same I'm just not an emotional person so if you are kind of like that go ahead and comment below we'll have to like dm each other and figure out what the heck is wrong with us <laughs> all right so moving on um someone gave me instagram tips that was their question um I think it was Ray Edwards if I'm not mistaken um, she said she just recently started Instagram and girl, I've been on Instagram since like 2015 doing my, my whole YouTube thing or my whole beauty thing. Okay. And I have literally gotten to like 2,500 subscribers max and like they drop and then they raise and they drop and they raise and my likes are at like a maximum of 40. I have no idea <laughs> how to master Instagram. Um, I really admire like um, what is it? I'm Rezzy. She's got 15 million followers on Instagram. I'm over here like, girl, what am I doing wrong? Um, I do know, you know, the usual stuff. Be consistent. Put good quality photos up. Put your heart into it. Really, like, put that creativity into it. Because the problem is in these photos and these looks or whatever it is that you're doing on Instagram, 
it's noticed. Even in a simple photo, it's noticed the effort you put into it, the creativity, the heart, all of it. So just make sure whatever you are producing is the best that you can do. I'm not saying it has to be super high tech and lights and da da da. Just make sure that it is the best possible stuff you're putting out there. And just consistency is key and hashtags, because I don't know. Other than that, I'm so sorry. Oh, and IG stories, that's a good one. Make sure you do an, an IG story like frequently, because if you notice across your um, IG stories, it's like the more frequent ones are up at the top. So if you're posting all the time, you're gonna be in the front, they're gonna see ya. All right, so the next one is jobs outside of YouTube. Okay, so I actually have two jobs outside of YouTube. Um, the first job is that I work um, and just like basically administrative um, stuff. It's kind of hard to talk about because I'm not really like there's not a lot of stuff I want to put out there about that um, or that I can. Uh, yeah, it's it's complicated. I can't really disclose that information. That sounds weird, but basically I just I type on a keyboard all day. Um, and then uh, for my part time job, actually, I just started doing DoorDash. Um, and I realized how many people hate DoorDasher. However, like I really love doing it and my husband loves doing it and I make decent money doing it. Um, it's not really hard. It's just kind of like tedious, I guess, but we almost make it into like a game, like who can make the most money in a shift. Yeah, but those are the two things that I do outside of YouTube. So on top of YouTube, I do two jobs and I have three babies. I have a 10 year old, I have an eight year old, I have a 10 year old son, an eight year old daughter and a three year old daughter. So, and I am happily married. Um, so, and Steven is the one, my husband, who does like all of the behind the scenes stuff. And um, he's really great. He is really great with that. So, it's a fun fact about me, my little family. Oh, <laughs> the next one was family. So, yes, um, I do. I have three children. So, they find it a lot of fun. You know, they want to be a part of it sometimes too. And I like to incorporate them in it um, just because I want them to know like it's okay to follow your dreams. It doesn't matter how old you are what you're doing or what your dream is or how silly other people might think it is. I can't tell you how many people still think it's silly that I want to be a YouTuber. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like there's tons of people out there who are making enormous amounts of money and, but it's funny to them. So whatever, to each their own. Hobbies. Hmm. Shit. I don't think I have any hobbies out. Hmm. I don't think I have any hobbies outside of makeup. Um, I like to eat. Is that a hobby? I like to shop. <laughs> We're gonna go with shop because that's all I got. That is a really, really sad. I need to find a hobby. Makeup, like art in general, I'm like real big on it. Fashion. If you have any hobbies you would like to send my way for some suggestion, comment below. <laughs> all right, so we'll move on to the next one. I don't want this video to be like super freaking long. All time favorite products. Oh boy, I don't remember who asked this, but I think this one was also on Instagram. Uh, Jill, Jill M, Jill M, I think your name is. Please tell me below if I got that right. So I'm going to tell you four of them. So this was very hard to do because it's just, I have so many things that I like. So we'll go into the favorite products and then I'm gonna tell you my top favorite brands. So my top four favorite products are Huda Beauty setting powders, Kylie lip kits or the satins or the glosses. I'm really, really a big fan of her lip products in general. Um, Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadows. I have almost all of them. I don't have the old, old ones, but I have like all of them starting with Modern Renaissance. And then Wet n Wild bronzer. Like I know that sounds really strange, but their bronzer is really freaking bomb and it's like $5. So get you some of that. Walmart drugstore bomb and I would have to say my feet my three favorite let's go current my current three favorite makeup brands is going to be Colourpop because they're coming out with some good stuff they did piss me off about my shipping y'all know that y'all know the tea with that but Colourpop milk makeup freaking fabulous like I am loving milk makeup right now um and I want to say ABH. I have all their eyebrow stuff, lip stuff, highlighters, glow kits, blushes. I have a lot of their stuff. And I even tried to get on their PR list. I said that in my last video. I'll link above. And then I thought to myself, like, bitch, 
you have like three fourths of what they were giving away. Anyways, that's beside the point. What YouTuber do you hate? Oh, okay. So let's correct this question. I don't hate any YouTuber because I don't really know them. So which ones do I dislike? <laughs> which ones? Like, see how I said plural? Okay, so I'll give you three. Three that I could think of. And if you are a fan of these YouTubers, or you are these YouTubers, please just calm down. It's all opinionated. You might like them, I might not. I might like someone that you might not. So that's it's fine, <laughs> just please. Um, James Charles. i just not really a fan of James Charles. I think that it's really awesome that he has blown up like the way he did so fast. Um, and like his palette is okay and like all of the stuff he's doing is really bomb but he annoys the hell out of me I can't sit through his videos all the way without going what <laughs> um, I will say that I can relate to him because I know a lot of people talk crap about him moving his hands a lot in his videos and I do that so I just like Neh. another reason why I kind of like stopped liking him was when he kind of made facetune a thing. So Facetune was a thing before James Charles, obviously, and you used it, if you don't know what Facetune is, to kind of correct your face in pictures or lighting or texture. He went overboard and did like this whole, basically was like, fake your photos, just fucking fake them. Like if you can't get the color pigmented enough, just lie to your followers and subscribers and just color those things in with paint on Facetune. And I'm sorry, but that is so... It's so misleading and I'm just like, I can't believe you did that. And like, obviously people don't have to do it if they don't want to do it. But if you're an impressionable person, the things that you say out of your mouth are taken like seriously. So, um, I just, I don't like that he promoted to me when you overly face tune and y'all know what I'm talking about. You've seen it on Instagram, you've seen it on the internet. When you overly face tune, you're no longer a makeup artist in my eyes. I'm sorry. Yes, you've mastered Facetune, good for you. But I wanna know what that looks like in person. Because the problem is if I'm a Joe Schmo trying to copy your look and it doesn't look like that, now I'm beating myself up because I don't think I'm good enough at makeup or I don't have the skills like you do to complete a look to look and achieve that bright or crazy of a look. But in reality, it isn't you, it's them. And I just hate it, I can't stand it. So BTW, fun fact, I hate Facetune. There you go. <laughs> Um, unless you're using it normal, like to fix lighting and some texture, like, come on, it's unnecessary. Chill with the face too. If you know what you're doing, your pictures are going to turn out fine. The color will turn out fine. If the palette or the product is good, you're selling false hopes on items that obviously are not pigmented enough. If you're painting over the colors, that's all I'm saying. And another reason I don't really like him or care for him is because when the girl Lauren, I think her name was, destroyed his palette, he like lost his shit and was like acting entitled, all high and mighty. And I'm just like, dude, it's not that deep. It's not that deep. I understand there are people across the world that want that palette, but at the end of the day, she spent her money on it. She could do whatever she wants with it. Like. Your PR sucks because they should have told you to shut up. Like, you sounded like, he just sounded like an ass, man. Like, it was like, who cares? And now you have your freaking clones or crazy psycho fan people, like, messaging this poor girl and threatening her and death threats. Like, come the freak on. It's makeup. It's makeup. And the second one, which is like, ugh, my shirt keeps moving, which is kind of like regrettably um, is Jaclyn Hill. Like, I used to love, love Jaclyn Hill, okay? Like, I'm talking back in her, like, apartment, kitchen area. Love Jaclyn Hill. Dark-ass videos sitting on her kitchen table, Jaclyn Hill. Um, but I feel like <sighs> she kind of sold out. Like, I feel like she sold out. Um, there's a lot of YouTubers that have been around just as long as she has, and I don't feel that way about them. So, I'm just kind of like, Yeah. I think my honest last straw with Jaclyn Hill was when she posted a video, I think it was a couple videos ago, and she sat down and she's like, I didn't really want to film this video, but I know how to get one up. Pause. If the 
first few minutes of what you're saying is you don't want to do this or you didn't really want to do this, it immediately, I'm done. I'm done. First of all, I've supported you and watched your videos for years when you were dirt poor and didn't have shit. So all of these people that you are doing this for, you didn't want to do it. It's, it's a burden for you to have to do. First, it's your job flat out. Second of all, these people that you're complaining about having to do a video for, which I'm sure will love you no matter what you say, you know, they're loyal fans. So they're still going to, they're still going to like follow you even after you say something like that. But I, after that, I was done because the only reason people like Jaclyn Hill and all the other YouTubers and me and from small to freaking PewDiePie. The only reason that they are in the positions that they are in, creators, money makers, whatever they want to be called, is because of you guys. So when she did that, I completely was just like, I'm done. Like, that was a terrible, and maybe she didn't mean it that way, but it just was, it was bad, man. And I was just like, wow, sorry you know, the people who made you a millionaire are a burden to you now. Kind of makes you a self- I'm just kidding. We're moving on. We're gonna move on. Okay, the third YouTuber I can't stand. Oh, yeah. Um, I just don't, I don't care for, gosh, she's so obnoxious. Ah, uh, Trisha, 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 Trisha. Hold on. I know her name. I just can't think of it, but she's real trashy. There's always like some kind of gossip about Paytas, Paytas, Pay whatever. Again, if you like these YouTubers, that's fine. I still love you. It's just my personal opinion. Um, I don't like her because I think she's freaking annoying. <laughs> uh, and on something, maybe, I don't know. I She could be having a rough time in life. I don't know her personally. I just can't stay every time she pops up on my YouTube. And like, you know, it'll start automatically playing. Like if you're just chilling there for a minute, I'm just like, for the love of God, get off of my screen. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't like this whole truthful thing. Like I like being honest with you guys, but there's a limit of line. You're crossing it. All right, so the next one I put actually right next to it, but I got it from two different people. This was from Jenny. Um, who is your favorite YouTuber? Samantha Ravendahl. I admire this girl so freaking much. Like, if I could pick one YouTuber that I spent an entire day with, it would be her. Because I feel like her, not just her, like, attitude or personality of I don't give a fuck, but it's not the I don't give a fuck, it's the, oh, excuse my language, it's the bluntness. Like, she is real. Like, there is no like sugar coating it there is no tiptoe around like she gives it to you how it's supposed to be like product wise thoughts opinions like and she just doesn't care and i freaking love that about her i think that she is so freaking humble i kind of hate that she stopped doing her pr i get why she did it but i really hate that she did because when she would get it first and she reviewed it i loved it I loved it because she was so honest. She didn't give a shit who sent it to her or why they sent it to her. She was giving it to them straight back. I literally, I adore her in every way. Um, I love her honesty and I just really wish that like I could just like be like her. Like she's so honest and just like you get what you get. Like what you're looking at is what you get and I love that and like that just resonates with my soul. So um, if you're watching this. Samantha, I love you. <laughs> Fangirl for two seconds, sorry. All right, guys, so that is it for my truthful YouTuber video. I hope you liked it. I hope it wasn't too long, too talky. I hope I got enough of your questions answered. Um, I did my best. And I just hope that like you guys kind of learned a little bit more about me and about YouTube and how I feel about it. Um, again, if I said something that you don't agree with, you don't have to attack me, you don't have to be negative. We all have our own opinions. There are things that you're gonna like or do or say that not everyone's gonna like and just take it into account when you're down there in the comments. 
what you say to other people and how it affects them. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.